Now in today's video, let's talk about an amphibious plane, which is this one. Amphibious meaning that it can operate on land and water and in the air in flight, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is the Beryev B200, a Russian airplane that came out in 2003, but which never was a real commercial success. Now, yes, as I've already said, this plane can operate on normal ground, on normal runways, but it can also land in water, which is a bit crazy. As you can see, we have a green cockpit here, which is very, very typical of Russian aircraft, actually, for some reason, I don't know. Now, around a hundred years ago, most airplanes were actually seaplanes or float planes or amphibians. We don't really see that many float planes anymore, especially when it comes to airliner float planes. Those really don't exist anymore. I mean, these days we have pretty good worldwide airport infrastructure, so there's no need for float planes anymore. But Beryev tried something and kind of massively failed. Now, as you can see, we have a pretty spacious cabin, actually. This was supposed to be a regional airliner. But the thing is, no airlines have ever, ever bought this plane or ever, ever used this plane. Right now, it's only used for fighting fires. Yeah, there's a special fighter fighting version of the Beryev. This one is the normal passenger version, which again has never been sold. Now, how many of the Beryev's B-200 have ever been built? It's 17. 17 are flying around the world, which is kind of sad. Now, let's talk about this plane's design, right? Now, its fuselage itself is not very, very special. As you can see right here, it does have the shape of a boat a bit, but other than that, it looks like a normal plane fuselage. We have a wing here, and we have these tanks. These are probably filled with air to stop the plane from tipping over in water, which is something that can happen really, really fast. You really do not want to tip over. Over, right as you can see we have two engines here I think these are from Rolls-Royce I guess or at least there's a Rolls-Royce logo on those uh, these are obviously placed pretty high so that they don't get affected by any water splash or anything like that we also have a t-tail design pretty special also I think I forgot to say this is a high wing aircraft not a low wing aircraft this plane design kind of reminds me of the Boeing Sugar the 737 of the future this is what that looked like yeah, that one also had a T-tail design, but that's a whole other story. Let's just go ahead and take off, right? We're just gonna take off on ground first, right? Now, the thing is to operate on water properly, or at least to take off on water properly, you do need quite a lot of engine power, which I hope this plane delivers, right? Yeah, this plane is quite a fast accelerator. That did not sound right at all, did it? Now, whatever, let's just put gear up and uh, fly, right? Which we are doing right now. We are just casually flying. Oh, damn, this is really a quick accelerator. This is working really, really well. Now, a question that I have, actually, is why this plane exactly failed. Why did no one buy this? I actually do not have a straight answer to that, but, I mean, Russian aircraft tend to have lower sales just because people don't, like, trust them or I don't know. It's about maintenance as well. It's pretty hard to maintain a Russian aircraft. You know, you have to wait a long time for replacement parts and stuff. That's all making Russian aircraft pretty unattractive for airlines. Now, let's go ahead and land in the water now. I think we are way too fast. Let's put the speed brakes out. Now, landing in water is no challenge, right? I hope, right? I don't know. Yeah, we should probably get rid of some more speed, but yeah. Actually, this cockpit seems kind of nice, right? You have uh, modern screens. This looks like a Bombardier cockpit just a little bit. This seems kind of futuristic. All right, let's go ahead and touch down. That was hard without any GPWS callouts. That was a good landing, right? We were able to land perfectly. As you can see, we have these tanks again that keep our airplane level, that we don't tip over into the water, which is something that you really do not want to have, right? And we are just casually uh, taxiing in the water. As you can see, these engines are high enough to be protected from the water itself. This was quite good, right? Let's check out that landing, though. Yeah, Reiner would have done a worse job, right? So yeah, let's try taking off. As I've already said, in order to take a plane off 
from the water, you need a lot of power. But let's go. Oh my goodness. Okay, the cockpit view is kind of weird this time around. It's it's very blue. I think I broke my flight simulator a bit, but that's no problem. Let's just go ahead and normally take off. Yeah, I can imagine that for passengers, it might be weird to sit in the back of the plane. It must be very, very splashy. Oh, Jesus Christ. The blue cockpit is very weird. Now, we do need quite a long run, which is very normal. Let's just see. We will be able to rotate soon. Let's wait until we hit around 140 knots. Uh, I can already see why no one wanted this plane. Yeah, this is really only usable in the ocean, <laughs> probably. All right, let's go ahead and rotate. That was successful, though. That was not very bad. We were able to take off quite well. That was not very good. Now, this plane was supposed to seat around 40 to 70 passengers, depending on the configuration, which is quite an amount. That's not too bad, right? Let's go ahead and land inverted. I actually wanted to land in water, but that works out fine as well. Now, something that is surprising to quite a lot of people is that the US has actually the most barriers. You know, it's uh, for California, they have their issues. Yeah, they have four barriers. And I think they actually have some on order right now. And they will be delivered quite soon, like this year. Yeah, this plane is not very dead. Beriev is still alive and they are still making aircraft and they are still producing this one as well. Maybe not very successful, but as long as it flies, I always say, right? No, let's go ahead and take off, right? We actually have a pretty high amount of wing flex there. I think you can see that quite well. Yeah, the wings tend to flex a lot. That's very interesting. And we are just normally off ground. Oh, damn, this plane is going crazy. And now you may wonder why no one wants this plane as a passenger aircraft. You know, as I've already said, there is already airport infrastructure out there. And so I don't think there's need for float plane airliners unless they are used for firefighting. But yeah, the book of this plane's history is not quite closed yet. Yeah, this plane can still come out as a hit. This particular model probably not because I just crashed it into the ocean and it's unresponsive, but just imagine, right? Yeah, anyways, it's doing its job as a firefighting aircraft very, very well. It works, and that is good. Now, this plane has not ever had any crash, so we cannot really concern the safety at all. I mean, obviously, there are only 17 airplanes of these flying around, so we cannot really have data at all, but, you know. So, yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video, and I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night. Thank <laughs> you.